Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with another episode of Lawrence Training Academy, brought to you by Night and Day Marine. I am again here with my HDS-12 Live, and what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to set up your overlays uh, on your screens. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, it's really easy to do. Now all you got to do is just press your power button right here. So we tap it. Now it brings up the screen, which is your system controls. Now you're going to see there's two options. There's data overlay and there's edit overlay. Now data overlay just turns your overlays on and off. That's all it simply does. Just removes them off the screen or adds them back in. Now edit overlay gives the ability to actually go in and customize and manipulate your overlay data. So what we do is we select it. Now you're going to see the options over here on the side. Now the first one you'll see is going to be add. Now you're also going to see how there's a little box around it. Now that's the one that's currently selected. Now let's say you had multiples over there. You can click on which one you want and it'll put the little box around it, which will then give you the ability to go in and either delete or change, configure, do whatever you want with it. You can even take your finger and hold down on it and drag it and move it wherever you want on the screen, whatever's good for you. Now first what we're gonna do is we're gonna select add, which is gonna bring up our list of all the different overlays that we can pick. Okay, so the overlays on here, they are specific to the data sources that are available to it at any given point in time. So if, say, for example, um, you don't have uh, something connected to it at a particular point in time, chances are it's not going to give you the ability to add the overlay for it until it's connected. Now, I've had a lot of people say, uh, you know, hey, I just hooked up my unit and I can't add in my depth overlay. Well, the units are kind of picky about that. It won't recognize um, depth until you take it and actually put it in the water and let your unit lock onto the bottom. Once it does that, then you can actually go in and add depth overlay to your different screens. But a lot of times it'll prevent you from doing that if, say, you just did a hard reset on it or, like I said, it's a new install. Now, what you can do is you can trick it by going and turn your simulator on and then go back because it's thinking that it's getting a sonar reading. So then you can go and add that depth reading to it. But there's something I want to show you here also. Um, it's a pretty important one. We get this a lot. Um, it's adding your, your voltage overlay. Uh, I think this is a pretty crucial one. Um, I recommend having this on at least one of your screens just so that you can watch it. But what you do is you go down to the very bottom. Like I said, I just touched it and drug my finger upwards. And then I go down to other and I select it. Now you'll notice there's a little box right here, a little gray box. If it has the little empty hollow arrow pointed over to the right, then it means that it is um, kind of shrunk up and it's just at its uh, basic level. Now, if you, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a little filled in arrow now that we selected on it pointing down. That means that it has dropped down the options below it. But as you can see, we can't see anything on it now. So what we do is we drag it up a little bit more and now you can see the options below. So what I do is I select supply voltage here puts a little check in the box, and now you can see my supply voltage shows up in the corner there. Now you can go through, and you can do that on any of them that you want. You just select the little box, it drops down, and you can add any of these to that screen. So let's go in, let's add, let's say another one on here. Um, that would be a good one. Well, let's go ahead and let's do time. So we're gonna just do time, we select it, and I go back. So now you can see that there's a little outline on it. So if I select them or tap on them, it puts a little box about it and makes that the active overlay. So now over here, you're gonna see these other options. Now, like delete. Now, if I click on it, it'll just delete that off of the screen. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now there's also change. If I click on it, what that does, is it allows me to go in and change that selected overlay and you know just change it to something else that's on there. You can select any other overlay that you want it just puts it in replacement of it. So let's say there's one that's on there that you don't want, but there's another one that you do. Uh, instead of having to go in and delete it and then go and add another, you can just simply hit change and then switch it over to something else. And let me hit X here. Now you're also gonna see option for configure. Now if we select configure here, you're gonna see a bunch more options pop up. Now the first one here is gonna be type. Now it's gonna default to digital on most of these, um, but let's do it on our time right here. Now if I select it, 
you're going to see it switches it to analog. And what that does is it kind of makes it look like a little analog clock there. Um, and you can just kind of tap on it, switch it back and forth. It's just kind of a personal preference type of thing. Now you also have your size here, which they, again, they default to small, but you can go through and you can make it as big as you want. Yep. Now what bezel is going to do is it's going to put a little outline around it. Um, it's because this one was hollow, so it makes it all black. Um, but if I click on it, it switches back like that. Now kind of the same thing with inverted text, everything that's black goes to white. Everything that's white goes to black. As you can see that there. And then caption is, you'll notice that each one has a little word over it explaining what it is. If you click on caption, it removes that off of there. Um, and so it's pretty basic um, on these. They're pretty easy to do. Um, you know, you can go through and um, let's say you can turn those on. Now the bezel, I don't really care to use except for when I'm using in night mode where it makes the screen real dark. I think it makes it kind of, the overlays pop out a little bit more at you, a little bit easier to see. Um, but that's about the only time that I really recommend using the bezel feature with it. Now, the last one is gonna be limits. Um, limits is if there is, um, right now I don't have anything connected to it that I can run it with, but it's kind of like, um, you know, you have a high limit and a low limit that you can set. Um, and so if it goes above or below that, it sets off an alarm for you. Um, now let's see if we go back here and now whenever you're done, so let's say we selected everything that we wanted and then make sure you hit save. If you don't hit save, it will not set that to it. And when you exit out, it'll remove any of the changes that you made. Now also remember when you set an overlay, it only sets it for this screen specific. Cause if I go in, I press my pages. So let's go to sonar. When I select it, it has its own set of overlays. It doesn't carry over from screen to screen, so you have to set the overlays for each individual page that you want. The same applies to your split screens that you over here. Whenever you select them, you have to go through and manually set them. Now on the split screens, you don't have to set an overlay for each side. When you set it, they're just gonna automatically pop up over here, but then what you can do is you can touch your finger and drag it over to the other side. Here, I'll show you. I can hit edit overlay. Now I can touch my finger on it and I can just drag it right here. I can press save and then that's it. You know, uh, it's real basic, easy to do. Now, um, there's actually one more thing I'd like to show you on this. Um, let's go back to our chart. Let's go press our power. We go and we hit edit overlay. Now with that one selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I'd like to do is I usually will hit, um, we'll just say change. Now you're gonna see the little blue circle over here to the side. Uh, when you tap on it, it's gonna bring up these few options here. The most common one um, that you're gonna use is your data sources. So let's say for example, your water temperature isn't showing up on your unit. Uh, you're just getting dash lines. It's a really common problem with these. Um, what you can do is you can go through and you can select it Go in and hit your data sources. And now what it does is it brings up to the data source selection screen where you can choose where you want that source coming from. So I can go over and I say if, if it was water temperature, I could have select my sonar and then you would see water temperature listed there. When you select it on it, it's gonna drop down and give you some options like you're seeing here. And all you gotta do is just pick one of them that does not say invalid next to it. Um, a real common thing that Lawrence has had with these is that your water temperature will just stop working all of a sudden. And what you do is you go into the data source selection and you're gonna see it's the one that's selected for whatever the reason will have three question marks and say invalid. And all you do is you go and you click on one of the other options that's listed below it. And then you'll actually see your water temperature will show up down at the bottom. As long as it, it happens in that way, then you can go ahead and you can exit back out and then you can save and you'll notice that your water temperature has come right back. Well, all right, guys, um, that's it. I didn't want to make this too long. I don't make a quick video. Just want to show you how to set up those overlays. But all right, well, thank you for watching. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it below and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. This will allow you to get notifications every time I release a new training video for your favorite Lawrence product. Also, I wanted to give you guys some really exciting news. We will have our own very own website pretty soon, LawrenceTrainingAcademy.com. It's going to have even more of your favorite in-depth, comprehensive training videos, so keep an eye out.
Of course, I'll be sure to let you all know along the way when it will be up and running. And don't forget, when you watch videos from Lawrence Training Academy, the difference is night and day. Alright, I'll see you all next time.